Okay, so I'm in the middle of putting some new sound libraries into my master template. Now, in the last episode, we talked about how I got everything started in contact. This time around, we're going to be focusing on VE Pro itself and how I enable all the audio channels and buses. Okay, so I've got all of my cinematic studio woodwinds incorporated into my VE Pro session broken out into these three contact instruments. Now for this one, I only have two articulations I need, short and long. And normally for woodwinds, I only do short, long, or effects. I don't have trills on a separate bus or anything like that. And the important thing here is all of my woodwind libraries are consolidated down to a single set of buses. So if we go all the way over here, All my woodwind libraries are targeting one of these five buses. So whether it's Berlin woodwinds, Spitfire woodwinds, Hollywood woodwinds, or my new cinematic studio woodwinds, all the long woodwinds are going out of this, this one fader. All my short staccato woodwinds are going out of this one fader, and that is mirrored respectively in Cubase as an input. So... I've got a long and a short output coming out of contact. Here's the real trick with doing things like this, and it can get a little confusing because it's more like plumbing with water or electricity with wires. It can be a little abstract. So here's the general idea. So you start with your specific instance of contact, and... You need to have, in our case, two outputs coming from contact to connect into VE Pro. So I'm just doing short and long for all three of these, actually. Short and long, short and long, and short and long. Now, the real trick here is I have two instances of high woodwinds and one instance of low woodwinds. So that means these first two high woodwind instances here, high and high, my long woodwinds need to be able to go to the long bus down here, and the short woodwinds need to be able to go to the short bus. Right now, it's only output one and two. It's, it's defaulting to output one and two way up there. Oh my gosh. So it's way up here, output one and two. What I want is a bus. And these are the buses. It's literally just showing you all the buses I have in this instance of VE Pro. I want it to be woodwind high long. Done. Great. Piece of cake. It's going out of woodwind high long. But, but wait a minute. What about the shorts? We've got short woodwinds as well that need to go to the short bus. So how do I get it out of contact and into this bus. That's what this little plus does. This is just a contact instance, but any instance allows you to add multiple outputs. This is another output. Now it's going to automatically route this second output to three and four. That's what you're seeing right here. This is your three and four output. And if you choose the assignment here, to go to woodwind high short. Now we know this is woodwind high long, this is woodwind high short. So these two faders are literally mirroring these two faders. Otherwise, the shorts go nowhere. There's nowhere for them to travel. This is the second instance of contact with our second set of high woodwinds. So I want this one to go where? Woodwinds high long. I'm going to add another output. That's output three and four, which mirrors the shorts. And I'm going to put this to woodwind high short. Great. This is the low woodwind output. Well, where do we want to put that? We want to put it out of woodwind low long. And then here, woodwind low short. And that's all you have to do. Now, I know that the high longs are going to the high longs. The high shorts here are going to the high shorts here. 
so that way it's routed within VE Pro the way I want. Now, they can be slightly more complicated when you start adding additional articulations. Maybe you want your trills on a different bus. All that really means is you're adding another output here as well as another output here, plus add another output. And that's matching up to another bus you have down here. Now, the more versions of these you need, the more uh, wide and the more channels you end up with, and the more outputs you need to physically go out of VE Pro through Ethernet and into the other computer. But in a nutshell, that's how the audio routing works. Now, the other important thing to keep in mind is your MIDI channels, but honestly, I don't really address that until I get to Cubase, because it's just easier for me to think about it that way. I'm not worried about MIDI channels quite yet. What I am interested in setting up is the channel enable and disable. If you look here, so this guy right here, disable channel, control E. I've got all of my individual instances, which are the colored instances. The grays are the additional outputs. The colored ones are the actual instances of Spitfire or Contact or whatever. I want to be able to enable and disable these with a continuous controller. And I've got one single continuous controller that I use, the same one for all of my VE Pro instruments, and that's CC24. I don't know why it was just available and I'm using it for other things uh, with like real hardware. So I have a slider on my keyboard that does it automatically, but normally I'm just using it as a, like a little dot, a little data dot of CC in the track at the very beginning. And we'll get a little more into how that's set up in Cubase for me. But the important thing here is how we set it up in VE Pro. Now, usually with all of these, um, I have everything purged. So the idea is when I start playing the instrument, it pulls up the samples. It's not loading all the samples as soon as the instrument is enabled. And nothing is enabled when I open up my template. Everything is disabled. So the way you link this is all you have to do is basically assign an automation to it. So right here, automation mapping. This is where, and I first looked at this and I was like, I, I don't see, I don't see anything. How am I supposed to do it? There's two panels here. There's parameters and there's MIDI controllers. Obviously, this is where the automation goes for enabling and disabling the instrument because I've already got it completely full. And I really wish VE Pro would move this because it's dangerously close to the tab and it literally will erase everything and you do not want that. So this is actually very simple once you know how you want to use it. I'm going to add a new one. And you know what? Before we do that, I'm going to have to give it a MIDI channel, a VE Pro like MIDI channel pointer. And normally the way these things are done, although I do see some up here that are, that are higher, is I do them in numerical order. So if you're at the top, it's a, it's a smaller number like one and two, and then I try to be numerical and in order. So I know if this was 38, I can go to 39. But what we're gonna have to do is double check our MIDI channels and make sure there's not a 39 somewhere. So I think we're good starting at 39. If you select all of these and you choose to option click your channel, so I'm holding down the option key before I click it. Now when I select 39, it's going to automatically go to 40 and 41, which is really nice with whatever channels I've chosen. So now I know I'm pointing to 39, 40, and 41. You need to know that because that's the first thing that you enter down here. 
it's going to ask, which VE Pro instance do you want me to point to? Well, right now we're going to do 39, and it's going to be channel 1. And what did I say the controller was? That's right, 24. So if that's confusing, 39 is here. Channel 1 is just the, the default, because I'm going to have this whole thing turn on and off. And then controller 24 is slightly arbitrary for you, but I picked it because it's a fader and it's a CC that I use all the time for other things. So I knew that I could access it really easily. That's why I chose 24. But as you can see, you can choose any controller you want. I mean, it's just like completely wide open. Now, see, disable is the command we're looking for. So I'm going to find it in my list here. Here's CS high. Now, if it says high two, that's your second output. You don't want to point to the contact output that you added for the short. You want to point to the original contact output. And all you're going to choose is disable. That's it. That's all you have to do. The source, MIDI channel one, and then whatever CC you choose, and you choose disable. So I'm going to add two more which is usually what I do. I kind of go numerically and do this column first. So this is going to be 40, channel 1, 20. <sighs> yes, you're not the only one that does it. <sighs> 24, and then 41, channel 1, controller 24. So we don't want the high two, we just want the high. Disable. Low. Disable. That's it. Now I know when I either move my MIDI fader or I just put a CC data dot, anything above zero will disable it. And if it's on zero, it turns it on. Once we have everything set up in Cubase, we can test the individual enabling and disabling of these three channels along with our MIDI channel routing to all the specific instruments plus the audio bus routing to the different articulations. All right, we're getting really close. We've got everything set up in VE Pro. Next time, we're gonna take a look at Cubase and how it all comes together. 